Okay guys, one thing I'm gonna do real quick for you guys, a little bit of extra bonus, I guess. One of, probably, one of the things probably most mentioned in the comments is how come you didn't rework the spark plug? So this is how it is from the factory. So what I did, and I haven't smoothed it up because I haven't worked the rest of the chamber. I'm gonna do that separately. So the only thing I addressed right here and it's still left rather rough, was just going around the spark plug itself, get an idea, it's more contoured. Granted, I could have probably knocked the whole thing out but then that leave threads exposed to the spark plug. So honestly, if someone were to port it, um, it would probably look something similar to this, but of course polished. And I'm gonna say the chamber's not done. All I'm simply measuring is if taking out this huge chunk here and rounding it like it should be, if it's gonna have any difference on flow numbers. And we'll see. So in later episodes, I'm probably going to do blend this valve job in all the way out like it should be. And then we'll try a rough finish and a smooth finish and a super fine finish. And then I'm gonna get rid of that and see if that does anything. This I actually think something for wet flow that the factory did, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, as you can tell, it's rounded. It's not like that anymore. And you just get a better idea. I left plenty of material still here so that the spark plug, it, if this was to be run, and several people were like, are you gonna put it on the dyno? It's because you didn't watch the previous videos. Um, this head will never be on a live engine. This is just for testing. Um, but if it was, I would leave probably about this much material so that this way the spark plug isn't, threads aren't exposed and it's not gonna have any issues like cracking. So once I start blending this in, I'm gonna blend it into this and this will all get smoothed out. I didn't wanna do this yet for just this video but eventually all that will get smooth right in so anyway let's put on the flow bench see if that from that makes any difference at all okay this was probably the second most asked thing for me to do and this has to do with cutting down the guide so i'm going to show you what i did and i'll do some explaining about the guide after i flow the head and show you the results about why the guide has to be long or why they are longer, but let me show you. So this is the stock guide that hasn't been cut down. You see how much it sticks above, the camera's having a hard time focusing. See how much it sticks uh, above where the vein is, okay? What I did is I machined down just this one. So it's flush with the top. Let's see if I can get a better angle. So you can see it's just flush with the top. You can see some uh, spots here because as I was cutting it down, left like burrs around the side. So what I did was I um, just went around with a cartridge roll to get rid of those. And I went those getting sucked in the bench. That's why I got some, um, looks like marks here. But if you compare that to the stock one, see how much it sticks up? This one, this one. So I'd say I'll, I'll get exact measurement after I get done flowing it because I'll measure this guide length versus the stock guide length and see how much I actually got removed. And we'll see if it flows any better. But anyway, I want to show you this before I flow it. So get you an idea. All right, let me flow it and we'll see. Okay, here are some results for you um, about the cutting down the spark plug and cutting down the guide. So you saw in the video what I did with the spark plug. This is what it was before this, the spark plug was, was um, shaped around the spark plug area, I should say. This is it after. So we can, remember I said ignore the 100 or 10th of an inch valve lift. That's pointless because it's trying to be sucked open. But the spring's got enough pressure to hold it two inches. It may sound confusing. Maybe I'll do a video sometime to show you how I flow the head so you can see what I'm talking about. Point is from 200 or two tenths of an inch valve lift all the way to one inch is correct. So this is not cut down or, or shaped around the spark plug. This one is shaped. So you can see a gain there at two tenths, gain at three tenths, and then a gain at four tenths, gain at five tenths, a gain at uh, six tenths, and this is where it gets a little weird for you guys. If we look at seven, it's 332 compared to 355. You're like, what happened? This would make it look like the spark plug area was actually holding it back, causing it not um, um, to make the flow worse. It's not quite that way. And let me explain. Sometimes you can do things that would cause other problems to occur. So by removing part of the area around the spark plug, it allows more air to get past. Well, if more air gets past, it causes the velocity to speed up. So if the short side can only support a certain amount of air speed, and then you make it go faster, well, then it becomes unstable and it tries to ramp it 
and flow drops. And that's what you have happening here. It's not so much that the spark plug area being shaped caused this to happen. It's more that the short side wasn't shaped right and that's what happened. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point this out. On the other chamber so far, the one for the 55 degree valve job and the 50 degree valve job have not been shaped. So what I'm gonna do with those two is I'm gonna wait till I'm done pointing them completely, then shape the spark plug area. And we probably will not see a drop like we did here at seven. Because if we look at eight, it's also down, and nine down, and also at one inch, it's down. So it makes it look like that's hurting it there, but it's probably not. It's more the, it's causing a problem in the port. Now, the second thing that people ask me to do, and you just saw me, is I cut down the guide. Um, so we look at that. So it just went from this to this. Cutting down the guide lost about 10 CFM right there, two tenths. It's also lost there at three gains there at four, lost at five, gain at six, a big gain at seven. So you see how it dropped off there, but it picks it up here and you're like, wait a minute, wouldn't this still be the short side problem? Not entirely. If you think about what's happening with the guide being cut down, you're moving uh, area in the bowl, which lets there be more area there. So by getting rid of that part of the guy, there's more area there. That gives more room for air to make the turn. So hence it's able to keep the short side more stable and the flow picks up. Cause it also about the same there, picks up here and picks up here, giving us our highest numbers ever so far from that. So cutting down the guide did hurt down low, which I'm not entirely sure why that is, except for maybe having the guide stick down there further is what's causing it to be more stable and directing the air where to go. But as you get in the higher lifts, the air speeds are higher, and the valve guide's more of a hindrance as far as area and causing problems. That's just a speculation. Now, I'm gonna show you something about guides because you guys had asked about that, and I'll show you um, some of the reasons for cutting down the guides versus not cutting down the guides. So let me go ahead and get the head and I'll show you some things. Okay, now let's deal with the guide and how much actually got removed off. I measured the stock guide that comes in these heads, these Flotex, and they measure 2.3 inches long. I cut off a total of 0.130 uh, off, or now the guide, total length of the guide is 2.170. So in other words, cut off a little, little over a tenth of an inch of, of um, a material. So uh, not a ton, but 0 0.130 is significant. I mean, you could tell by the shape how much got cut off and it still had a pretty good influence on the flow numbers. It's still 2.170 long. Now, the question is, well, how long does a guide have to be? Well, there's a lot of factors that can play a part into that. For the most part, um, LS guides, at least on these ones, are pretty long. And it could be the fact that um, the longer the guide gives you more, um, it gives you more, I don't know how to put it, reliability for the guide to last longer because, or sorry, the guide and the valve to last longer because there's more material supporting the valve. The valve job should last longer, everything should last longer with a longer guide. The reason why is there's more material to hold the valve, in other words. So, and LS is, um, especially, you know, stock ones, they've got their own little rocker system, but they're not adjustable. Once you bolt them down, they are what they are. So if their wear patterns might be a little off or maybe they needed to be different, there really can't be any adjustment to that. Now, if you, of course, had like shaft rockers, you could do differently. So maybe that's why stock LS um, heads have such long guides. The reason why I say that is because if I compare this to say this one and this one, this one right here is from a Brodix Dragon Slayer. It's about two inches long. I think it's 2030, um, but it's significantly shorter than this. So we're talking almost 200,000 shorter than this. This one right here is for a big block Chevy. Um, I believe this one's to fit the race rights, um, big blocks. So it's a longer guide because it has no other aluminum around it. That guide itself has to be longer because if you see this one, you've got aluminum that surrounds the guide. If you ever looked in the race right and whenever one gets in, because I've had some ordered since July, um, you'll see that it's just the guide sticking there, sticking out. And it's only being held by about this much material. So all the rest is just hanging there. So they need a longer one just to kind of support it. So in their case, they have to have one for that. So you're like, well, well, how much do you need then? Should I just, I, could I just mow this whole thing down? I am positive that if you mowed the whole thing down, got rid of that vein, you're gonna hurt flow. So 
Um, also, you can't just cut away guides, because I'll tell you a quick story. On the 10XR heads that I did for Engine Masters, I actually cut down the guides considerably. So they're about this long as well. And I cut off about to that line, which it's more than that. I'd say about 200,000 got removed. They gave me a total guide length of 1.8. Now the idea was I'd get more out of it. I didn't think the Engine Master engine was gonna run that long. Well, I ended up selling, the guy ran it for quite a while. Anyway, it came in and it's currently here still for a freshen up and you know what happens? Well, here's what happens when you cut the guide down too much. There's nothing to support the valve, so the valve kind of dances in the guide. And when that happens, it's also dancing on the valve job. So instead of it just slamming down like it should, like going up and down and hitting, the, hitting it like it should, it actually moves sideways as it's coming down. And so what that does is it actually wears the seat and causes it to sink in and get worn out. And that's exactly what happened to him. Matter of fact, the valve job had dropped so much that it had taken up almost all the lash. We had 18,000 slash because it was a solid. It had zero because it had moved down that far from wearing out both the guide and the seat. Or sorry, the guide wore out, then that wore out the valve and the seat. So cutting down the guide sounds like a great thing for airflow, but it does reduce the valve life and the valve job life. So just something to keep in mind. Now on this head, particular head though, I don't think it would have cutting that much off, that one, 130, I don't think it's gonna have any negative effect as far as wear on this head because the guide's already so long. It's uh, it's longer than um, the ones I use in my small block Chevys. So I honestly think you're probably gonna be okay if you were to cut down this much. Um, that's me. Now, can you cut off 100 thousandths and be safe on everything else? I'm gonna say no, because I've seen a lot of import guys where their valve, their guides are really short, like shorter than this, like super short. And some of those guys will cut them off flush to the port. Well, there's little to no material holding that um, valve at that point. And then it just wears out the valve job pretty quick. So anyway, point is you need the guide to support the valve and keep it from wearing out. You can try to remove some material, but it's going to cost you um, durability. So there's something to think about. Thought I'd share that with you guys. Thanks for watching. Take care.